we golden? from the Oshkosh Beer Blog. I'm Adam from McKnight & Carlson Wines. And it's 2016. Yeah. And we have snow everywhere, and we're drinking an Imperial Stout. Apropos. Yeah. From Black Husky Brewing in Pembine, Wisconsin. So this is a small brewery in Marinette County, just outside of Pembine, Wisconsin. Uh, opened in 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, former home brewer started uh, making his own beer. And now they do about uh, 300 barrels a year. Yeah. They do everything by hand. Everything by hand. <laughs> Bottling by hand, labeling by hand, I've brewing seen, by hand. I've seen pictures Hauling of bags of grain by yeah. hand. Like <laughs> labeling the beer by yeah. hand. It's, it's got to yeah. be an enormous task. And they deliver yeah. themselves. So it's, it's Tim and Tony Eichinger, uh, husband and wife duo. Um, Tony runs the business side. Tim does all the brewing and the uh, logistics. It's amazing. It is. It and is. So, so they're in Pembine now, but they're not going to be in Pembine for long. No. They're uh, hoping, well, this spring they, they intend to move to Milwaukee. They've got a location on Locust Avenue in Milwaukee in the River West neighborhood, um, which there they'll have a tap room. They have no yeah. tap room up, up in Pembine. They yeah. don't even do first, tours. First thing on, on top of their websites, we do not do tours. Yeah. Currently, yeah. So. Um, but they'll have a tap room. They should be able to do somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,000 barrels a year. So they intend to keep it pretty much yeah. in house. They, it, you, know, you know, Tim was saying that it, you know distribution was you know they're happy with what they have and they want their beer in the right places and you know they're not looking to be you know the next Ale Asylum or somebody who is you know yeah. ramping up big well, time. Really, I mean, they're only distributing it. I mean, 80 percent of their beer goes to Milwaukee. Yeah. And yep. then outside of that, there's some going to Sheboygan. Yeah, Oshkosh, of course, yep. which you brought in. I know Madison um, has uh, probably second most accounts over Milwaukee, sure. but, but still not probably half yeah. a dozen. I mean, how, how did you hook up with them? You know, I think I was. We were just talking about this off camera, and I can't really actually recall the first time I had a Black Husky beer, but I know it was a, a divine moment. Um, I'm pretty sure it was at a, at a beer festival. It could have been great taste, and I know I, I reached out about probably two, two and a half years ago now, and, and we actually got put on the waiting list uh, because there was such such a long list for their beer, and there's so little beer to go around. So it was a great day when we our name was called. Well, I've heard these stories, too, about how they vet their customers. Yeah. They don't just, it's not call them up and get their beer. They, yeah. they check into you and see yeah. if, you know, Absolutely. If, if they'll allow you to carry it, which is, I guess if, you know, you're that exclusive and you're doing 300 barrels a yeah. year and people are that into your beer, you know. You can be selective. Yeah. Not yeah. many brewers have that uh fortunate are, are able to do yeah. that you know yeah, absolutely but their beers all tend to be a little bit bigger yeah <laughs> so this is an imperial stout and it lives up to its name it's like uh 8.8 percent yeah 31 ibu I, I forget what it said on the uh warning this beer has extreme flavor yeah and it's it's 12 dog imperial stout. yeah and they're all named after dogs yeah they have sled, sled dogs, sled dogs. yeah, yeah so. exactly well, let's get into it yeah dark black beer mm. with a really deep tan head yeah pretty Oh, nice nose. Yeah. yeah, kind of like cocoa powder right off the bat. Yeah, you know what's surprising about this one too is like a lot of times with Imperial Stouts you think roast. Yeah, you know that big roast yeah. thing. This yeah. doesn't have that. It, it's no, more it doesn't. You know? Well, and, and I think I've seen a lot more Imperial Stouts in this style. God, I love that aroma. It's almost like um, nougat. You know, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I get a little bit of like blackstrap molasses too. Mm, yeah. Well, it's very nice. And it's yeah. not, uh, I mean, the alcohol's there. You know yeah, it's there. It's there. But it, it doesn't it doesn't overcome yeah. other flavors, and it, it's not piercing in any way. I wonder what the green bill was like for brewing this beer. I mean, it just has a massive yeah. malt mouthfeel. Yeah, it's very full body. Yeah. Very full body. You get kind of creamy vanilla on the palate and kind of like a syrupy note. Yeah. And I'm getting, I'm getting like a caramel, mm -hmm. you know, a nice caramel flavor. Yeah. So again, not a ton of. Well, and and one of the key points of this beer is that they use twelve different malts to brew it. So. <laughs> oh, that's the twelve. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Exactly. I didn't realize that. So it's not going to be, you know, just a ton of the same kind of roasted roasted malt. The other thing I like about this is, I think a, a lot of American brewers tend to 
really push it with hops with this. Yeah. I mean, you've got that big malt bill, so you can really kind of load up on yeah. hops. But it, sometimes it gets to be, the whole thing just becomes too, overwhelming. Too much. Yeah. 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 Well, this isn't that way. It's it's balanced. I mean, the hops are there. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I can taste the bitterness of the, yeah, my it, palate it, right it now. Yeah, it finishes really nice. Yeah. You know? I love this. Like this time of year, I mean, it's terrible out there. Yeah. Well, it's not terrible, but I mean, it's well, cold as hell. It's There's cold snow, snow everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. I it's like, like uh, up until like you know this week. Yeah. I was kind of like still drinking more of a, you know summer and fall types. Beer. Yeah. Now this is this is it, really fitting. It, it changed just that quickly. Yeah. So um, we should say that in addition to this, uh, this is a once a year release. Their seasonal right now is the Big Buck Brown Ale, which is a uh, brown oh, yeah. ale brewed with maple syrup, and that's very nice. Again. Throw, throw any style guidelines out the window. This is unlike any beer you've had when you think of a brown ale. I mean, it's a big, you know, robust brown ale, and you get the nice maple syrup in the background. So. That's a great beer. I forgot about that yeah. one. And you have that here now? Yep, we've got oh, Big cool. Book Brown Ale. We usually stay up to date with every seasonal that they have out. Nice. And then their core brands uh, that we have currently are their Pale Ale and their uh, Spruce 2, uh, oh, yeah. IPA, uh, double IPA somewhere in there, <laughs> uh, brewed with... Uh, Spruce tips. Well, his IPAs are excellent. Yeah, really I, like that's what he's too. most well known for. He, he, he does um, an Imperial Pale Ale that, that comes out late summer called uh, Howler, and that's um, that's a really that's like a nine and a half, ten percent alcohol yeah. um, IPA uh, brewed with honey. So kind of hop slam esque, I guess you could say. So that Imperial name, you know? Yeah, I'm kind of like a stickler for some yeah, of this stuff yeah i think it should only be applied to stouts yeah <laughs> you know i mean it, it kind of that was a thing that the american brewers kind of did in the i guess 1980s yeah. maybe early 1990s yeah. where i mean this was a traditional style beer they, they would send these beers off to russia sure like, sure you know catherine the great yeah. late 1700s was bringing these beers up there and it got that name imperial because it was for the people, it was for the imperial court, exactly. Russia, you know. But then now it's tagged on to all these sort of. Yeah, beers. yeah. I don't know. Well, you get the czar, the czar from Avery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I guess there's not just being a prick. I guess. No, well, that's okay. <laughs> um, well, I bet you know what? What would you call it? You know, a 10, 11, 12 percent IPA. You know, or double IPA. A double IPA. Double IPA. I don't okay. know. No, well, I guess well, you know, I, I can kind of see that where it gets weird for me is like imperial pilsners. Yeah, it's an oxymora. Yeah, you know? I know. It just doesn't really kind of. Exactly, but you know, it's I guess it's a it's shorthand. You just know it's going to be a strong beer. Yeah, that's good enough, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, you know. but um, okay. Anything else we want to get into about Black Husky? I don't think so. I mean, if you haven't had the beer, I really, really would encourage you uh, get out and try some, whether it's on draft or in package. I mean, it's if you're if you're a craft beer fan, no doubt you'll you'll enjoy it. Yeah, they're really brewing excellent beer. Yeah, uh, you know, um, when they moved to Milwaukee. Uh, have you heard? Are they going to continue to self-distribute? Uh, it sounds like it. Yeah. Okay. Tim. Tim said, "I don't want, really want much to change, other than we're going to increase production a little bit. Um, hopefully, be a more steady supply to our current accounts. Maybe add a couple of accounts, but supply our tap room was first yeah. and foremost." I mean, what? that's got to be a real chore to like <laughs> be driving from Pembine down. Well, I know his once a week his and... schedule is is brutal, but yeah. you know. I guess the allure of great beer is there, so it's it's not a it's not worth cool. I mean, they're doing it right. Yeah, it's they're doing a fantastic beer. job. So uh, before we get out of here, a few things I want to go over. So the month of January is going to be huge for beer events in Oshkosh. Yeah. There's just a ton of stuff going on, which is kind of unusual. Yeah, you know, you think of January as being more of a sleepy month. But yeah, but there's really a lot happening. Um, I'll put a link uh, to the Oshkosh beer blog in there, and if you look. On the left-hand column, there's a full listing of these, but there's a few I want to mention right off the bat. Uh, Monday, January 18th, uh, Omaro's Public House is going to have Winter Brouhaha, which is a beer dinner um, where they'll be pairing, very, I think it's five-course meal with uh, different winter beers. Nice. Um, Tuesday, January 19th, Gardena's Beer Bar Series number 25, and you're having Fox River Brewing. Fox River Brewing that. Company, we'll have a cast, a couple beers on tap, our chef's tasting menu is going to be... A great evening, actually. Kevin Bowen and I, our chef, are going to oh, sit cool. down shortly and drink some beer and throw out some pairing ideas. So. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Friday, January 22nd, uh, Chester V's is going to have their first sort of event. They're going to have a Wisconsin Brewing Company tap takeover. Oh, I think nice. what they're going to do is they're going to set it up on one of the table tenders there. Sure. So people can pour their own, essentially. Oh, that's I'm cool. not sure exactly that's how that's going to That's a neat idea. Uh, Wednesday, January 27th, um, there's going to be a beer dinner at Dublin's featuring the beers of Deschutes Brewery. That's a five-course uh, beer pairing uh, dinner. 
thirty dollars for that one. Oh, curious um, to see if the lineup is there. Yeah, I, I think they've started working on the menu, so they might have that okay. released pretty soon. But there's just a ton of stuff going on here uh, right now in Oshkosh, so there's no reason to stay home just because it's yeah. Get out and drink some beer, please. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, Adam. Awesome. Hey, cheers, guys. Cheers.